Hello everybody. Welcome to my corner where I talk about my opinions, good things, bad things, and my joy, sometimes frustration over books that I read. This is the first video that I'm making and we will not only talk about books, some of my content will be book related, but we might even do some other cool stuff down the line. But for today's video, I'm a little excited about. We're going to be talking about my September TBR. Now, the day I'm filming this, it is September 6th. I'm a little late to the game, but better late than never. So I have five books on my TBR. Four of them are physical books. One of them is a digital book, but we're gonna start with the physical books. Now, let's start on a high. The first book is Crown of Midnight by Sarah J. Mass. A lot of the books I'm gonna talk about today, disclaimer, are part of series. Actually, I think all of them are. All of them are part of series, but I'm going to speak about my thoughts on the books that I've read in these series. I'll give my rating and what I'm excited to read about in the books I'm going to be speaking about today. Crown of Midnight. This is the second book in the Throne of Glass series. Before I speak about Crown of Midnight, let's speak about Throne of Glass. Let's, let's get on the same page. I thoroughly enjoyed Throne of Glass. This book had my attention from page one to the last page. There were multiple reasons why I liked the book and I had some little reservations about it, but let's talk about the good stuff first. The good stuff is I liked how I was dealing with an independent, strong woman, main character. I will say I'm awfully tired of reading about damsels and distress people who need men to save them i i'm i'm good without that i i can live without it but throne of glass we're following an assassin she's the most wanted assassin and i like about the way she talks about herself she can physically verbally and maybe maybe sometimes it's pushing it, maybe emotionally, defend herself. I love Selena's cockiness throughout the entire book. So I have the collector's edition of Throne of Glass. It is so freaking pretty. And then if you can tell, I have a lot of freaking annotations. Occasionally I annotate my book, but mainly I do it for fantasy books. But for Throne of Glass, we follow a renowned assassin who has built a negative reputation. This is not spoilers, this is in the little synopsis of the book. Selena Sardothian in the beginning of the book is locked up in a prison. She has been sentenced to this prison and has <laughs> suffered. For years, in the beginning of the book, the captain of the guard named Kaol, he comes to retrieve her from the prison and basically brings her to the palace where she meets the absolutely terrible, freaking heartless king. The king makes her an offer in the beginning of the book. He states that if she defeats 23 warriors, some of them are assassins, if she defeats them, she can become the king's champion. If she wins this competition and becomes the king's champion and she fulfills this favor for him, he won't send her back to the prison. Instead, she will be the king's champion and carry out tasks that he sets for her. Selena doesn't want to go back to the prison. She hates the prison. She hates the people there. She's been tested too much there. She is not in a good physical state to survive that prison, even though she has survived there for so long. She would rather become the king's assassin, hate him for however long she needs to be his assassin. Now, I'm not entirely sure, or I can't remember, how long she needs to be his champion for. I read this book back in May. It's September now. I forgot a few details, but I do keep a reading journal and 
um, make notes so that when I do pick up another book in the series again, I can at least refresh my memory on what took place and what I did read. But that's basically what you read throughout the book. Her going through so many trials, defeating these champions, being with Kale, just being the best freaking main character ever. But this is basically what you read about in Throne of Glass. Also, side note, when I finished reading Throne of Glass, I rated the book 4.75 stars. I know that's really specific, but sometimes giving a book four stars or five stars or even sometimes four and a half stars, it just isn't enough. It isn't accurate enough for me. So occasionally, not often, I will give the book a 0.25 or 0.75 rating. I usually won't get any more specific than that. Now, for kind of midnight, I'll just read the little blurb on the back of the book. So, Selena Sardothian, she won the brutal contest to become the king's champion, but she is far from loyal to the crown. Not surprising. Though she goes to great lengths to hide her secrets, her deadly charade becomes more difficult when she realizes she's not the only one seeking justice. Her search for answers ensnares those closest to her, and no one is safe from suspicion. Not the crown prince, Dorian, not Kaol, the captain of the king's guard, not even her best friend, Nahima, a princess with a rebel heart. Then, when terrible night the secrets they have all been keeping lead to an unspeakable tragedy. As Selena's world shatters, she will be forced to decide once and for all where her true loyalties lie and what she is willing to fight for. I'm kind of excited to read this book because in the first book, you gain some insight into whoever Selena is. And I'm excited to learn more about that in this book. Who is she? Where did she come from? She is an amazing assassin and she does know a lot about the world and she doesn't play with, with events that have taken place in the past. But I'm excited to learn more about who she is as a person and how she grew up being an assassin and where the assassin that trained her found her. I think I'm really gonna like this book, not gonna lie. I would be surprised if I gave this book less than four stars, especially since I gave the first book 4.75 stars. And with the first book, I was intrigued from page one to the last page. So I would, I'll be surprised. I'll be surprised if I don't enjoy this book as much. But I'm excited. I'm excited. The second book that I have on my physical TBR is Powerless by Elsie Silver. I have read, of course, Flawless and Heartless by Elsie Silver. Loved those books. Of the two, I enjoyed Heartless more. Flawless was good, but I wanted a little more country aspect in it. And I totally got that in the second book. So in the first book, you follow Rhett and Summer. Rhett is a famous bull rider and you follow Summer who's his agent who has to babysit him because he lost his sponsorship. Someone needs to keep an eye on him because he keeps making terrible decisions. Things happen to get close th throughout his tour even though his he has his injury but it's 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 amazing. Heartless on the other hand I have a different special place in my heart for even though I love flawless. Heartless, you follow Kate and Willa. Kate is in search of a babysitter. Willa is there to take the job since she doesn't even really have a job and she's like in limbo with life. So she has to babysit his son. Oh my god. This little boy is so freaking cute and it's just oh. gave me baby fever. He loved to eavesdrop. He loved to speak his mind even though he knew he shouldn't. He said things that he really shouldn't have just even if it wasn't tied to eavesdropping it was just like he spoke a little too much he had such high energy he was willing to do anything and be a little reckless oh my god even though he was Cade's son he was definitely an eaten and the relationship that willa built with him was so soft so loving so like heartwarming it was it was amazing Cade, grumpy sometimes an asshole, guarded his feelings and his past, but we're gonna overlook that because he was very, he was very much a gentleman to her, just like how Rhett was to Summer. For Powerless, we're gonna follow Jasper, who is not exactly an Eaton brother, 
but he's basically a brother because Bo, Kate, and Brett found him wherever we're gonna learn about it in this book. They found him somewhere. They took him in. And in the second book, Jasper makes the comment to Willa that if they didn't find him, he would be dead. So. What am I supposed to do with that? How can I live on without knowing what, what his past is about? This book, we're gonna learn about it. But we also follow the heroine, Sloan. Sloan is Rhett, Kate, and Bo's cousin. Even though we follow Jasper and Sloan in this book, we know that at the end of the last book, Sloan got engaged. From the way it was written, Jasper wasn't entirely happy about that. He didn't make a scene. He just looked sad. Like, wow, you're actually getting married. But neither of them realized that both of them, well, they both have had crushes on each other since they were young, but never did anything about it. Probably because Jasper probably doesn't think he's worthy enough for her, which you can see throughout all the books, but that doesn't need to be spelled out. But everyone can see, or at least Cade can definitely see, that Jasper likes Sloane. Sloane can't see it. And then Sloane likes Jasper, but she can't see it. So that's what we're going to be dealing with in this book. I'm excited. It's going to be fun. I freaking love the cover. Sloane is also a ballerina, a professional ballerina. Jasper he is a professional hockey player, very well known, and very popular. The next two books on my physical TBR are somewhat related. It is Unravel Me by Tahiri Mafi and Unite Me. Unite Me are two novellas put into one book. I've already read Destroy Me, which is the novella that comes after the first book in the series, Shatter Me. What I will be reading is Fracture Me, which comes after Unravel Me. Does that make sense? I really hope it does. Since this is part of a series, let's talk about Shatter Me. Shatter Me was honestly better than I thought it was expecting it to be. I was hooked from the first page and from the first line. The first line in the book is, I've been locked up for 264 days. All right, I'm there. I'm with you. I'm intrigued. Where are you taking me? Because now I'm scared in a good way. You start out Shatter Me with main character Juliet. Juliet has been locked up in basically it's it's like a prison but for mentally ill people but she's been locked up because of certain powers that she has. Juliet has the ability to hurt someone when she touches them. That is when you read about this throughout the book her experiences of touching someone and experiencing not even watching them feel so much pain is so sad to read about. Due to this, she's been locked up in the establishment by her parents. We start out the book with Juliet in this facility. Suddenly, a man comes into her cell. And the weird thing about this is Julia has been locked up in this facility for 264 days and she has never had a cellmate. Fast forward, Juliet is taken out of this facility and brought to the reestablishment. The reestablishment is basically like the government in the book. They take Juliet out of the cell, bring her to their commander. The commander's name is Warner. Warner wants to bring her under his wing and basically use her as an interrogator to learn information from their enemies. At the end of the Shatter Me book, she escapes from the reestablishment. She discovers an underground facility that houses other individuals who have abilities similar to hers. I rated this book four and a half stars. Now, the blurb for Unravel Me is Julia escaped from the reestablishment. This book is where you follow her her experience being in that underground facility, learning more about herself and her powers, and also being with Adam because Adam did escape with her and they did form a romantic relationship. Also from the blurb, now that she's free from their plan to use her as a weapon, she's free to love Adam. But Juliet will never be free from her lethal touch or from Warner who wants Juliet more than she ever thought possible. Haunted by her past and terrified of her future, Juliet knows that she will have to make some life-changing choices. Choices that may involve choosing between her heart and Adam's life. Now, I'll be honest, I don't know what is gonna take place in 
Fracture Me, but I do know in Fracture Me, you're reading from Adam's point of view. So I'm interested to see, I'm interested to see what I'm going to read about. So that was all of the books on my physical TBR for the month of September. As for my digital TBR, I only have one book and that one book is Bound by Love by Cora Riley. She is a very much well-known mafia romance author. So the books that are in this series are Bound by Love, which is where you follow Aria and Luca. Luca is the heir to the capo of the New York mafia. Aria is the daughter of the conciliere. I don't think I'm ever going to say that right. She is the daughter to the conciliere of the Chicago outfit. Now the Chicago outfit and New York mafia, they've been enemies for years, but for Bound by Love, their arranged marriage is supposed to form an alliance between the Chicago outfit and the New York mafia. This first book, which you follow, Aria and Luca, you visit them again in the book that I would like to read this month. Throughout the series, this is a companion series. Throughout the series, you follow different characters, but they're part of the same world. Ari and Luca make an appearance a lot of the time, I think probably in every single book. If they don't make a physical appearance in the book, they're being spoken about in the book in Bound by Love. We would follow them throughout the few years that the series has taken place in and the obstacles they have faced, how they have handled the situation and how certain decisions and actions have impacted their marriage. But that is my September TBR. I really hope you enjoy this video. We have a good five selection. We have Crown of Midnight, then we have Powerless, then we have Unravel Me, and then we have her novellas, Unite Me. And then obviously, Bound by Love. So let's see how it all goes. And I'll probably see you guys in a reading vlog. Bye.